Hey, welcome back to another video. Today we will be reviewing Super Mario Party Jamboree. In this video, I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and my wish list for the future of the series. I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about the main party mode, but let's begin by quickly talking about the side modes. Some of the side modes are quite fun, like Rhythm Kitchen, which is one of my favorite side modes. Although there are some duds like Bowser's Kaboom Squad. The minigames are not that fun, and defeating Bowser is extremely repetitive. Overall, the side modes are a fun distraction if you are wanting something different from the main mode. But again, I do have an issue that I will be talking about later in the video involving all the side modes. Let's move on to the good. I'll first talk about the boards. I love that this is the first game in a while to have six or more boards, and there really isn't one that I extremely dislike. I feel like they all have their place in the game. I like that each board has a unique gimmick associated with it. It gives new players the ability to learn the game while keeping older players interested. I think they did a really good job on the boards. Another thing I like is the new concept for allies. This makes way more sense than Super Mario Party and feels more earned when you get an ally. And I like the idea of different allies having different abilities. I will say I have more opinions on the allies that will be coming later in the video. The pro rules are also a cool idea, especially if you have a friend group that is very competitive. Having a mode that takes away a lot of the luck is a neat idea, and I will say in the regular mode I also like that you can switch to choosing which minigames to play. Giving players more customization is always great. The only thing that confuses me with Pro Rules is that 12 turns feels weird, but that's not the biggest concern to me. If you are enjoying this video and would like to see more like it, please hit the subscribe button. I truly appreciate it as we are on a journey to hit a thousand subscribers. Thanks, and let's get back to the video. Next, I'll talk about the bad. My first issue with the game is its economy. It's certainly better than Super Mario Party, I hear some people say it's better than Superstars, but I disagree with that one. You get coins for basically everything, and items are extremely cheap for the most part. I've had this problem with Superstars. I think there are way too many lucky spaces. I would rather a DK space style approach of having the same amount of lucky spaces as Bowser spaces, but have some really good options, just like Bowser has some really bad options. On average, a lucky space gets landed on at least once per turn, which is too much, especially when a lot of the options are coins. I feel like with the economy, it's a death by a thousand cuts. The lucky spaces, cheap items, bonus minigames, allies giving coins, second and third place also getting some coins in the minigames, it's all just too much. Some of these ideas are good, but having them all together really ruins the economy and makes Boo insanely overpowered, as it's easy to afford a star steal when it should be a strategy that forces you to save. My next issue with the game is pacing. I grew up with the GameCube games and I'm used to 20 turns. I get for some people that they may like 10 turns better, but for me, I would at least like the option to play 20 turns within a reasonable time. I understand it taking a little longer, but I feel this game's pacing is once again a death by a thousand cuts situation. Players should be able to skip over text they have already seen, and the allies explanation should be able to be skipped over as well. There's also just too many spaces that have events or roulettes or activate minigames. In Mega Wiggler's Tree Party, for instance, 32 of the 63 spaces activate something. In Rollem Raceway, it's 42 out of 77. For Rainbow Galleria, it's 39 out of 69. In Goomba Lagoon, it's 47 out of 91. In Western Land, it's 60 out of 104. In Mario's Rainbow Castle, it's 26 out of 51. And in King Bowser's Keep, it's 51 out of 83, plus a potential two more every few turns. This is very unnecessary. If we look at the boards that came from older Mario Parties, Western Land's original board had 32 spaces that activated something out of a total of 114, while Mario's Rainbow Castle had 15 out of 53. I could understand a third of the spaces, but it doesn't need to be over half. A separate issue that impacts both other issues I have is the ally system. I really like the concept, 
but its execution could use some tweaking. I think a lot of people have at least some complaints with this system. One, the minigames are very long and it adds to the length of the game. And it is insanely long for a system that makes it very easy to steal that ally. I also find these allies can be overpowered. I feel like it would be better if the minigame lengths were cut in half and allies lasted for three turns and have all the benefits of landing twice or getting two stars, but instead of having an automatic ability, they have an ability that the player must decide to use and can only use once. Players should get the opportunity to use the ability or choose not to and get the benefits of landing on spaces with an ally, but risk someone stealing that ally and have the ally leave after three turns or right after the ability is used. That might not be a perfect solution, but at least it fixes some things and adds more strategy to the use of allies while reducing the game length. Finally, for my last problem, it's a problem that the Mario Party series began having with Mario Party 10, Super Mario Party was the most egregious with, and a problem that is in Jamboree. When making the game, ND Cube should have focused on the main party mode. The game does not need this many side modes, especially since some of them are lackluster, and that effort that went into creating those side modes could have been used for the main party mode, potentially fixing some of the previously stated issues or adding more minigames. 4-player, 2v2, and 1v3 are the three types of minigames that players are most likely going to be playing in the main game, yet they account for less than 50% of all games, 53 out of 112. These three types of minigames should have been the focal point for minigames. The two other most likely minigames are duels, which add 5, which should be more, and allies, which add 10, which that one I'm okay with. I don't consider item minigames actual minigames, so I'm gonna ignore that one. The vast majority of minigames should be used to complement the main party mode. I understand some people might like the side modes, and I do too, but not at the expense of the main party mode. I'd rather have an amazing party mode and a few okay side modes than a party mode with some big issues and multiple side modes that range in quality. And at the very least, if you are going to have side mode minigames, find a way to connect some of them into the main party mode. I will say before I move on to my wish list, I know I'm being quite negative. I'd like to say I do truly enjoy the game and every Mario Party has its problems. I just think it's constructive to point out the problems so that they hopefully get fixed and make future games even better. Finally, I'll talk about my wish list for future games of Mario Party. My first wish is for more customization. Everybody plays Mario Party a little differently and everyone has different wants and wishes when it comes to how they want to play the game. I'm sure many people disagree with some of the things I have said this video. That is why I think more customization of the games would be awesome. Control how many bonus stars, maybe give the option to pick what bonus stars there are, give players options when choosing how to price items, like maybe have an easy cheap mode, a hard expensive mode, and a mode where it fluctuates depending on your placement. Giving the players the option to customize more on how they want to play the game, I think would be a massive plus. Also, I'm unsure if this game will get DLC or if I will have to wait for the next Mario Party like I did with this game, but I would like to see some GameCube boards make a return. These are the boards I grew up with. I've had a lot of fun with the N64 boards, new and old, and I think it's time to shift to the GameCube boards. Or at least I would really appreciate it if some got included. I have a video coming out within the next few weeks on which GameCube boards I think are most likely to return. If you want to subscribe so you don't miss it, but I think there are some great boards that could really add to the game. And that is my review of Super Mario Party Jamboree. If you liked this video and want to check out more stuff, here is a video where I ranked the seven Jamboree boards. Until next time, bye now.